Hey you guys, so I have what I would consider to be some fairly sad news as to the future of Thompson Horse Lot, Pitkin Horse Company and all of this because I just got done having a sit down with Gary and I understand you guys that I have massive amounts of support. I, I I get it, I understand it, and I appreciate it. If you guys will hold on one second, I'm fixing to send out a blast text for people to join us. So hang on one second. Don't move, you 15 viewers. It's going to probably freeze. Okay, it's going to freeze. Let it freeze. Type in the comments below. Yes, it's going to freeze. Be right back. I'm going to send out a blast text. Just hang on. Okay, I am back. So, there we go, we've got 54. It's okay. Um, seconds from you said, I was counting seconds from when you said still froze. <laughs> so I'm back and I, I do have uh, quite a bit to say. I have actually a lot to say, but I don't think that anybody's gonna like what I have to say. Oh, here comes Gary back. trying to figure out if he's going to come speak his piece or if I get to speak his piece for him. Let's see, we have how many viewers? 110. Wow. That was fast. You guys were like getting on here in a hurry. We have a horse on its way here from Bastrop that has no paperwork. We do that shit, the state's here the very next day caller called and said, hey, is Dr. Horner there today? And I said, yeah, he'll be here today. And he said, I just picked a horse up at Bastrop and they wouldn't release a Coggins or any paperwork at all whatsoever. And uh, I'm needing to find a vet that will do it. So he asked if Dr. Horner will do it. And I talked to the de Department of Agriculture to let them know that this is about the fifth horse this month that has come here without any proper paperwork. They don't come here, they come to our vet. Like they call and say they don't have any paperwork and they're from Bastrop. So we don't let them come on our place but they meet our vet. So anyway, I called and um, so basically the Department of Agriculture as I'm speaking with them basically says, look, we have an issue. And I said, oh, we, we do. And he said, yeah. He said, um, you know, I know that uh, you guys have have some pens and you ship some horses and I said yeah we do and he said here's the deal we get a lot of phone calls I guess from your hate group from your like your haters and I said yeah I'm sure you do and he said uh, well it you know we just get so many that we're considering opening up like an investigation and I told him oh I would love that come on out you know bring yourself the pens are open we do what we can and he said well I just hate it for you guys because we feel like we're trying, you know, we're trying and they know that we're trying to home the horses and Gary is just, uh, he's done. He doesn't want to do this anymore. He doesn't want to deal with the public. Gary wants to ship the horses to slaughter. He wants to make a phone call and he wants to uh, have the contract back in his name and just continue to ship horses to slaughter with no regard for uh, the public or if you guys want to save them or anything else because he just feels like at this point I can have 37,000 followers that support us and you can have 15 people that are against you and we live in the type of society now to where 15 people can um, just cause enough problems constantly and manipulate the truth constantly oh no it's happening Veronica this is uh, probably you know one of those things to where I I believe that the hate group some of it is monetary I think they genuinely believe monetary wise that um, that if Thompson Horselot 
gets off of Facebook and shuts down or gets off of the internet and shuts down that they've hurt us monetarily. And Gary said this morning, I was making more money shipping horses directly to slaughter than I'm making now because I'm buying 30 rolls of hay every five days and I'm buying 500 bells of alfalfa a month and I was not having to do that. And I'm having to pay two riders and a girl that all she does is clean the water tanks and doctor horses and none of that, um, none of that was happening prior to this. There was nobody on salary. It was just, you know, horses and cattle came here. They were here overnight and then they loaded on trucks and left. And I understand that as we close, the haters will go after Bastrop and then they'll go after other pins because I am the flagship. I'm the forefront. I'm the most vocal. I am the most hated. I am right up here in the center of everything and because of my stance and my vocal out my just my ability to gather the masses and to make people uh, want to be a part and to follow it just makes the haters that much more vocal and you know you guys have to understand that we live in a society full of really stupid fucking people um, when they closed slaughter here in the U.S., people rejoiced. They rejoiced. They thought that they had saved, they thought that they had saved all of the horses. That they, that they, they saved everyone. That the horses would never suffer slaughter again and that slaughter would be a, um, an end. There would be an end. There would just be an end to slaughter it would never happen again and the truth is all that it did was condemn the horses to a worse fate that now horses still go to slaughter every day they just go directly to Mexico they go directly to Mexico meaning they uh, don't get to okay so let, let me try to explain before how, how slaughter worked before slaughter used to be here in the United States and horses would be gathered at a pen as such and they would only go about two and a half hours to a USDA regulated slaughter So you're never going to uh, euthanize or slaughter animals without there being some suffering. The vet can euthanize a horse and there be um, complications or side effects that cause for just plain euthanasia to go wrong. And uh, I'm, I would never do that, Sky. I would never, ever, 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 ever buy property and attempt to do this again. I just hail to the no. It is, I am financially stable to where this is not a job for me. So when Gary chooses to stop rehoming horses I'm done like I'm not going to go to the cell barns and buy horses and I'm not not going to fight that fight anymore I, I I live a very happy life I live a very peaceful life I drive a new Mercedes that's paid for by Lavelle I um, my car is a year and six months old I can trade it at any point I live in a house that I don't have payments on I do not make one dollar off of these efforts and I would never ever ever subject myself to this again I'm just telling you if it was not for the horses standing in front of me that I know every single day need me I would not do this bullshit I would just not do this I I'm not trying to be ugly I'm not trying to be I am a very decent looking girl <laughs> and I'm a little bougie little high maintenance and I go home at the end of every day sunburned, peeling, covered in piss and shit and blood and God only knows what else from this fucking place. And uh, my hair has not been dyed and I can't tell you when because I don't have time to go. And I just don't have to do this. And I think that my haters and those who have a vendetta with Thompson Horselot don't understand the inner workings of a feedlot or kill pins, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think they want to. I don't think that, I don't think they want to. I think that they just want to find fault, and they want to attack, and that's fine, but you have to understand that 
PETA and the animal activist rejoiced, literally rejoiced, when they found out that there was no slaughter in the United States, like they had won something. Not realizing now the horses are suffering long hauls to the border of Mexico, standing at the border of Mexico, and then being transported from Mexico borders on into Mexico, crammed into trailers in 115 degree heat, you know, trucks are overturning, horses are having heat strokes, horses are dying at the border. Um, now when horses are rejected, instead of them offloading them, and then right there on the spot, a rejected horse going back on the trailer, the horses are standing there, and now the rejected horses are just, you know, from what I understand, shot. Um, some of them are turned loose. You know, lots of unethical things happen at the border. Um, horses that go into Mexico are not always slaughtered. A lot of horses that go into Mexico are then sold for charro rodeos or bullfighting or things of that nature. So just because a horse crosses into Mexico does not mean they go directly to the kill plant and they're slaughtered. Lots of horses cross into Mexico and go there and um, even more horrific things happen than slaughter. So it's very, 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 very terrible what has happened since slaughter has closed in the United States. Now, I think the hate group feels like people that buy horses from the kill pen are scammed, that they are conned, that they are taken, that they buy an animal under false pretenses. I've read a lot of their complaints because I feel like if you run a business or you're associated with a business, I feel like sometimes in the, cr the critic group, you find the advice that you need to better your business, except for I saved something today. Let me see if it's on this phone or the, or the other. Um, this phone is dead. Um, it's probably on the phone that I'm talking on. So it basically said that a critic is somebody that is an expert in your field who either knows you, knows your business, and they don't necessarily criticize or hate you as an individual. They criticize the work. They criticize the effort because they feel like, as an expert in your genre or in your line of work that they have, uh, that they are an expert to give that advice. A hater is someone that doesn't know you, doesn't know your struggle, doesn't know the first thing about your business, but yet has an opinion. So I, I actually have a lot of haters and very few critics because there's a big difference. Uh, Haters are also considered competition, people that maybe are a little envious for some reason or the other. So, um, yes, Susan, um, it looks to me like Thompson Horse Lot is not necessarily closing. Thompson Horse Lot will still be buying hundreds of horses at a time, and they will still be shipping to slaughter. I just don't believe that by the end of summer we will be rehoming horses to the public any longer. I feel like... Um, I feel like there is a fine line here between the efforts that are put into this and then the absurd manipulation of the things that go on. And I genuinely believe that the hate group will rejoice and believe that they have um, facilitated in some form of a win. Maybe they will feel like, um, and it's not the haters on Facebook, it's the ones that actually go to the USDA and the Department of Agriculture and they actually ring the phone off of the hook to the point that, I mean, I'm not going to say they've asked us to stop rehoming horses to the public, but I will say that that may be in a roundabout way that they feel the need that as many phone calls as they get sometimes from hate groups that they need to continue doing open investigations, ongoing investigations over and over and over again because of the amount of phone calls that they receive. So at some point, in order to make the phone calls stop so that they can close an investigation and just be done with it because they've yet to find um, anything super, super major. We've had a corn, you know, some horses that had to be quarantined and things of that nature, but nothing crazy. Um, to the point that they've almost kind of said like, Hey, um, is there another way that you guys can do this so that these people can stop? Like, because they, they call every day. 
And the worst part is, is people that are for you never call. They never call and say, I love Thompson Horse Lot. I received a nice horse. You never hear anything from the positive people. You never, we don't, I mean, think about it. We, we update, we sell thousands of horses and you might get two updates a week on them or you sell thousands of horses and you might hear from one or two people that are like hey I love my horse because people that are satisfied to go home and enjoy their horse and mind their own business I mean I'm like that like if I buy a horse from you um I'm gonna take it home and enjoy it and you can look on my Facebook and see you know some updates here and there but to be honest I think Gary would really prefer to just sell horses to slaughter and to just sell cattle to slaughter, feed yards into slaughter, and to not have the public involved in our lives anymore. Um, Jacob has, is on probation. There is absolutely no two ways about that. I'm very protective of him. He didn't actually do anything wrong, but in the end, he was involved, and he's on probation, and I'm protective of him far past. I would rather be dirt poor and not have any... Uh, you know, I not have any issues, I guess, so to speak. Like I just, and at the end of the day, somebody kind of said to me, oh my gosh, you know, I know that you're rehoming the horses for the money. What will you do? And I turned around and I said, actually, I made a hundred thousand dollars last year and 116,000 to be exact. And not $1 of it came from Thompson horse lot. So here's the deal. If Jacob never worked another day in his life and we just lived off of what I make, we still do better than most people. No offense. I'm not degrading anyone. I'm not knocking you. I'm not trying to say that what you do isn't isn't great and that you don't make money. I'm just saying, if I can make $100,000 a year, we're going to live okay. you know. And Jacob and I can walk away from this completely and have our life separate. And Gary can continue to ship horses to slaughter. And we don't have to facilitate or be a part of it. And, uh, you know, I hate that it's come to this. I really don't think it's quite hit me. I don't think that what I'm saying, I don't think what I'm saying has quite, I've processed it because it's kind of new. The conversation is new. Where we're at is new. This is a, um, you know, like I haven't really sat down and had a plan of action on how to counter this or a rebuttal. I think that when Gary said I want to close Thompson Horse Lot and just maybe ship, just go back to doing slaughter, I think it stunned me. And then I said, but you're making a lot of profit rehoming them. Isn't it worth it? And he said, well, at the end of the day, by the time you pay the riders, you pay the, you know, Sarah comes seven days a week, not because she has to. She's only supposed to work five, but she comes on days she's off to, uh, Adriana, I would never, ever, ever do this. I would never own a kill pin. I would never, ever, ever do this on my own. This is not something in the, there is absolutely no way. Like I would never go to auctions and purchase horses with the intentions of slaughter. That's not something I would ever do with my life. That's not something that I would ever stand for, for me, for my heart. Now, if Jacob's dad wants to do it, I don't mind coming and rehoming the horses. But I mean, like I've blistered to the point that, I don't know if you guys can see them. Can you see the white spots? Those were blisters where I was so sunburned that I blistered and I literally had to pop these. I have no desire to run a rescue. I barely want to take care of, I mean, I barely want to take care of myself and my horses. I don't want to take on hundreds of horses and like deal with lots of other people. Like I have about eight horses and I love them and it's just enough that it's not work. It is just the most amazing group of little horses and I love them I would never want to look out like I look at high caliber and I do not envy them I, like because I feel like at that point when one effort takes on that many horses you you struggle to do things correctly for every one of them and I'm not going to do that I'm never ever ever because if I ran a rescue it would be that big and too many things fall into the cracks or by the wayside and I'm not interested I just don't so, um, so I, uh, I feel like I need to think on this and pray on this and I need to have some quiet time to myself today and tonight without Jacob's influence or Gary's influence and their frustration and to actually decide 
what I feel is best. And um, there are still horses available. We will continue with the horses that are listed. There are horses here that need to be listed. Uh, the doors are not shutting today. We are just in the position right now to where I know that Gary is at this point calling to get his contract by, you know, that we're not going to subcontract. Gary wants to make his living his living and not, you know, that was my, my shining moment was to be able to say we only subcontract because we don't have enough horses to fill a quota for a contract and to get in this position to where I feel like, um, I feel like the attention is we're under the microscope in so many so many ways that you can't win for losing and I know that everybody here will support me regardless of what I decide if I decide to go back to training racehorses or if I decide to go barrel race I will probably do so off of social media because I just don't believe that people on social media um, have the best intentions I So, I, you know, Kelly, I don't know. That might be a, a thought. I just, I think that a lot of our issue, too, is we've sold horses to individuals that um, saved a horse to save a horse and then upon getting it home don't really know about facilitating the rehabilitation of a horse with issues or uh, I don't know. And so we've had some customers that are really, really, really unhappy and... I don't think that I did the statistics of it. I did the absolute statistics of it, and it's about one in 200 people. About one out of 200 people is really unhappy to the point that they cause problems. And we have five people that have joined together that have purchased from us, and they have chosen to write the attorney general's office, and they have chose to get on every website possible and to create hi Kaylee they have chose to do a lot of really um, ugly things and at the end of the day it has not hurt us so to speak like we have not been fined or we're not being forced to close our doors or anything like that in fact it's not even that like it's a choice this is a choice Gary gets to make nobody has um, told Gary you you have to stop doing this or you have to no there's none of that so I'm sure the hate group will take my words and do with them as they please because they are very good at trying to read between lines that don't exist and they're very good at manipulating whatever I say into something that it's not and that's fine do I feel like some of the people that have bought horses from us have been scammed is the major question that I feel like needs to be answered I feel like our buyer's guide has explained to people 50 ways over the risk associated with buying from a kill pen. So I don't feel like anybody can say they came here and were scammed or conned. I feel like people know the horses are purchased low and they are marked up for a profit. And if you want to pay this price, great. And if you don't, that's okay. Nobody's twisting your arm. We do allow reprieves to be paid by the general public that has gifted funds to each individual horse so that at that point the funds have been gifted to lower the price in case somebody's looking for the horse but maybe needs a little help. Um, the reason I allowed that is so the reprieve to me is kind of like the profit, profit in advance in a way so that... Um, So that Gary can take that money and pay the overhead, if that makes sense. Um, the, you know, it's, that's the best way I know to put it, is it's maybe the profit, profit in advance, basically, is the way I look at it. Um, but other people look at it as a, uh, you know, like, we're asking people to pay for horses they're never going to receive. You know, the hate group has its own way of looking at it, which is fine. I feel like the reprieves pay a lot of the overhead so that... Nobody here is ever saying, well, I had to take money out of my pocket to pay the overhead. The reprieves a lot of times go towards the hay, the alfalfa, the help, things of that nature. Um, it's not me changing my mind. That's the thing I need people to understand is that it's not me changing my mind. It is 
the fact that I feel at the end of the day um, Gary is tired Gary is older I mean Gary is older and he doesn't understand the hate he doesn't understand the problem you know when you purchase a horse it's livestock to him and if you purchase a horse and it has ulcers and it loses a lot of weight and it doesn't look good you know that's luck of the draw to him that's not um, that's not him scamming you or him hurting you that's just you purchased a horse and it didn't do well here come here bear and I've tried to educate the masses in the sense that sometimes come on bear bear sometimes when we purchase a horse before it came here it was stall kept and it was fed three times a day and whoo, by being fed three times a day and being stall kept it had a routine come on bear get in hang on you guys my dog is really hot and he's black come on come on bear 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 Tholomew. come on come on bartholomew that's his serious name when mommy gets serious he's bartholomew bartholomew Come on, V! Come on, V! Let me let my dogs in the air conditioner. Hang on. Come on, V! Come on, Violet! Hurry! Get in the air! Come on! Come on, V! Get in the air! Come on, get in the air! Come on, V! Come on! Oh, bear follow me for the win. He said me first, Mom. Come on, V! You get in the back, child. All right. Get your butt out of the camera. Nobody wants to see your booty get in the back. Lay down. Whew. So, um, as you can see, Bear said, thank you for the air. Just need a little air conditioner sometimes. It's 90 degrees and he's black. He said, Mama, I'm dark. The sun just burns me. So, uh, You know, a lot of the Department of Agriculture stuff is coming from California right now. I feel like High Caliber and uh, Miola's place, they live in a different world than we live in. And I feel like it's unfortunate, but I do feel like um, probably, I think the two places I regret selling horses to um, are High Caliber and Miola's place. And I feel bad to say that, but I don't necessarily feel like the things that are worded are in the best interest of the horse. I feel like it's a dog and pony show and I feel like at the end of the day, um, I would never do it again. I, I just wouldn't. I, I don't, you know, when I don't have it at personal issue with someone, I try not to speak on a topic too much, but I feel like at the end of the day, when you use a situation to gain following or you use a situation to uh, gain donations and you didn't exactly tell the entire truth because there's people out there that don't follow us that don't know where the horses came from they don't know the situation I feel like it is what it is I and I'm not interested I'm not interested in the uh, you know, things with high caliber went fine. I don't have a problem with Michelle or Romney, but I also feel like sometimes things, when you're a rescue, uh, like Miola's place, I feel like high cal um, got them involved and I've had a lot of trouble with them. I feel like they're a dishonest group. I feel like their rescue is very much so uh, based around the money and not for the horses. And unfortunately, high caliber is how I got, in, got them or got involved with them and I feel like they even in a way are frenemies with high caliber, real, real frenemy-ish and uh, you know I'm not going to read into any of that but I do feel like sometimes things are said to make them look good or to make a situation look a certain way when that's not the way that it was and I'm pretty black and white. Any of you guys that have ever met me know that I am pretty black and white. It is what it is. And one thing that the state said today that was a little different was, uh, in the state of Louisiana, I said, well, here's my issue. We get a lot of really, really, really uh, emaciated horses, so what are we supposed to do? And he said, well, um, from what I've been speaking with these rescue women is that, you know, the sellers are doing the right thing by getting rid of the horses, knowing that they can't properly take care of them, so we have a hard time going after them because they did the right thing. They woke up and went, man, this horse isn't doing well in my care. I need to get rid of it. And 
potentially send it to someone who can. He said, as a kill pin, when you receive those horses and you have them less than 24 or 36 hours and you send them on to slaughter and in their suffering, you did the right thing. But when you keep them on your lot and they're there for an extended amount of time waiting on homes, their suffering doesn't end. So basically what the state said to me and the way that I took it was sending them to slaughter is a means of ending their suffering where holding them here, where holding them here is not a means of ending their suffering. Even though I'm, I'm holding them here, hoping that they make it to a wonderful home that can rehabilitate them. Um, that's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to ship them to slaughter so that the suffering is quick and painless. You know, that's the way they look at it. Like they come here on a Monday and ship to slaughter by Tuesday night, then, you know, by Thursday, their, their suffering is completely ended and they're dead and we move on to the next piece of livestock. However, when you bring them here and they stand in these pens waiting on a home um, for days and days and days, and maybe they have underlying conditions that potentially need treated that we can't treat. Uh, you know, because if they do go for food, and he said, if they're gonna go for food, they need to go for food. If you're gonna rehome them to the public, you need to start treating them, and that's the catch-22 right there. There's the catch-22 here, is that horses that come in here that are thin or that are suffering, or that they, they literally need to be shipped to slaughter within 24 hours, or 36 hours or 72 hours or whatever I can't remember the time frame he said or um, they need to to be rehomed basically and off the lot and in someone else's possession who can facilitate the rehabilitation of that horse because them standing here is that uh, that's adding to the suffering and that actually uh, came from somebody in the inner workings of high caliber that didn't come from uh, somebody that's an enemy of mine it came from somebody at high caliber they're the ones that had brought that viewpoint uh, up and said you know here's our issue the reason that we took these horses and not those horses is because these horses we felt were standing their suffering and they basically you know, it makes them look good in y'all's eyes that they came here and they paid for these horses, but they didn't take these horses. They took these horses because these horses were in worse condition. And, uh, you know, and then they made the comment, well, we got them back to California and we euthanized by gunshot, I believe uh, a couple. I don't know how many. I have not kept count. And so they ended their suffering where what, what was basically said at that point was that we were allowing them to stand here and suffer. And, yep, so yes. So the people that sold them at the sell barn cannot be held accountable, the sellers. I mean, this was, I talked to the Department of Agriculture today about it. I talked to a guy named John uh, something. Uh, I wanna say Watley, but Waldron maybe. And just so you know, they do not hold the seller at the sell barn accountable for the horse at that point. They hold the buyer accountable because the seller at the sell barn um, at that point did the right thing by relinquishing their rights to the animal to somebody who can either end its suffering or can whatever. So when we bring horses here that have heaves or that are thin or that are potentially injured, we need to ship them to slaughter immediately and not offer them to the public because by offering them to the public, they're standing here suffering. So there you have it, folks. Basically, the state said you're a kill pin. You need to commence to being a kill pin and stop trying to be a rescue effort because the rescues are turning on you. The rescues are pointing out the flaws within the inner workings of what I'm trying to do. And to be quite honest, it really didn't come from the hate group altogether. It came from rescue efforts who stated, well, once we receive horses, we have a vet on standby and the vet is here immediately to start beginning the treatment of the injuries. And well, we're a kill pen. And if horses are gonna go for slaughter and for human consumption, the vet can't administer antibiotics. The vet can't. So sometimes rescues, who are trying to facilitate their agenda and say things to make themselves look good really, really, really hurt 
the horses because there are lots of horses that come through here. Um, if you have a horse from Thompson Horse Lot who has made your life better, you know, hit the love button. Let's see how many people watch this and say, you know what, I have a horse from Thompson Horse Lot and I love him and he made my life better. I'll show you right now. This is a group of horses that are going to their new horse. These are the vet day horses. Here they come up for vet day. There you go.